Yo, uh, what's going on? Uh, I wanted to make something here pretty quick, just kind of talking about the start of Season 4. Um, as you can see with my gear here, uh, I've been pretty busy with just trying to fill every single slot with 509 gear um, and trying to farm that way. I'm still missing two pieces that I haven't even dropped yet. Um, but realistically, my goal is to drop every single gear slot at 509 so I can upgrade everything to 509 with only flight stones. I don't know why flight stones are still capped, by the way. I don't know. Um, but we're upgrading everything with flight stones. I'll be at 509. And once I'm at that 509 level, I'll feel be able to do a little more content and kind of relax uh, just a little more. I'll still be running Mythic Plus because I like to run Mythic Plus. But I won't feel the need to like hard grind it. Because uh, one thing I want to make sure I do... Is we have one more raid day uh, for the tier for uh, for the week on Sunday, and I want to make sure my gear is as high item level as possibly can, and everything's the way it should be for that last uh, raid day to try and get the our uh, our full clear in on the first day. Every single week it'll be easier with upgrades, yada yada. Um, but that's what am I mainly focused on? That's why I haven't really been like pushing out a lot of content. Um, but I want to talk about these vendors here. Uh, they are here in this building on the map. Uh, this is where all of your Season 4 stuff is. So uh, the Amir Jassil items are here. The uh, Abris items are here. Until and the Vault time. items are here. If you're new to this season, uh, these vendors contain all of the items from these previous raids uh, from the rest of the expansion. And they allow you to buy them to see you for a dinar. Uh, how you get these dinars or these bronze bullions are you kill raid bosses and the raid bosses just have a chance to drop them. Uh, every week your cap increases by one. So this week we have a cap of one. So I got my one. Uh, next week it'll be two. The week after three. So even if you come to the season late, it's not going to matter. Uh, you can just go do LFR, uh, which is in this menu here. Come here, you go do LFR. Um... These things will be marked with Awaken to know that that's where you can get the new loot and the new item level and stuff. Uh, one thing is it, that is interesting, though, is this LFR, you have to be 463 to queue up for these. But you can come over to the Dungeon Finder and spam random heroics. And these random heroics will get you to 476. So... By doing heroics, you'll be able to queue for Dungeon Finder. And you can do this on new characters, all characters, whatever. Because uh, the important part is these bronze bullions are character specific. So what my plan is, is I'm going to on an alt character, or two alt characters. I'm not really sure how many alts I'm going to get up to that 463 uh, level, uh, just so I can spam this out. Um, but essentially, I'm just going to get some characters up to that level. That's not my main character. And then I'm going to go to this vendor here. It just has a ton of cosmetics. Uh, the main thing I'm interested in is Jigglesworth Senior, this little boy right here. Uh, this is a unique pet, uh, unique mount uh, that is off of the Night Saber model. Uh, it is a reference to the Jigglesworth cat uh, that you could get in Shadowlands. But in the Shadowlands final season, they added this mount as something that you got for clearing all the heroic raids. So... Because they're not, I don't know if they'll do Faded again. They may, they may not. But I'm really happy I'm actually able to get this because it's really cool. Like, look at this guy. He's super cool. He's a little jelly man. He's actually super great. Um, but because of that, now I'll be able to get this mount. But it costs three of these ancient bronze bullions. Uh, so you only get one of these a week. And they're character specific. So what I'm probably going to do is my alt characters are essentially going to be transmog farm. Right? Like, same thing with a lot of people. After three weeks, my alt is going to buy me the Jigglesworth Senior while I'm saving crest to buy, or saving these to buy the big ticket items that I want for power and um, power game. And speaking of that, what should we buy with our, uh, with our bullions? You've probably seen already seen videos talking about it, uh, but I'll give my two takes on it. It's going to be relatively the same because there's honestly not that many big decisions to make because most of them are fairly straightforward. First and foremost, you'll talk to the dragon guy, and after two weeks, you'll buy the Scale of Awakening. What that does is it allows our legendary weapon to go up to 535 item level. That is an insane amount. So that means our legendary is going to go up almost 40 item levels. That is crazy. 
But if you're farming this week, something that's nice that you saw I did is I have my weapon at 522. So all I'll need to do because I upgraded this slot is spend mainly crests to get to that 522 level. And then I can spend all of my um, crests on upgrading it to the max level. So I'm still saving crests uh, from this week to make sure I can guarantee upgrade it all the way because it's very important. So that'll be your first two that you spend because it takes two weeks to get these. My ne The next again. two can be debatable. Most people are going to tell you to buy this item here, which is the sealed Dyrna's Chosen because most of the time a ring giving you a damage effect generally doesn't happen because rings don't give damage. You, you'll notice that the gear that you get here has strength on it, but rings don't have strength. So special affected items like this are incredibly powerful. Um, just simming a base eye level of this ring with the, the effect alone of, over what I had was like a 3% damage increase from a ring. Uh, so that thing, this thing is crazy when we get it. But hear me out. The other ring is normally what people might tell you to get second or might even tell you some guys actually have this ring last because of all of the rings, this will give you the not necessary, but of all the items you can get, this will probably give you the least amount of actual offensive power. However, I am a Mythic Plus man. I enjoy playing Mythic Plus. It's a lot of fun. I really enjoy it. And survivability is pretty king. Uh, in Mythic Plus. If you can't live, you can't complete the key, especially with infinite scaling content. So this ring at max upgrade level has like a 260,000 health shield that it gives you. That's nuts. That's crazy good. Now, it does say that has a chance to invigorate you, absorbing damage for six seconds. So obviously the shield will be on you, but sometimes it'll, da it'll soak damage, sometimes it won't. So, obviously, we still need to use our defensives correctly, but having just that extra layer of safety that could ha that you could have a lot of the time, I might be getting this ring first. Or after upgrading my legendary, I might be getting this ring. Because the stats are decent, the shield is incredible, um, but most people are probably going to recommend you go for your Seal of Dire Chosen because it is the most damage you're going to be able to get. Now you have a couple options. If you're looking at just damage, I've obviously recommended this ring. But if you're looking at just damage, now we have to think about trinkets. Because trinkets are very strong. They have they compose a lot of our damage. They're very, very valuable uh, damage-wise. Our two best trinkets are probably going to be Ominous Chromatic Essence and um, Whispering Icon, Incarnate Icon. Realistically, you're only going to want like one of these. Uh, they both kind of do the same thing where they give you stats and then if other people have them, you get stats from them too. So they're both very, very good. Technically, the Ominous Chromatic Essence is the better best in slot option. But if I'm going to be in a Mythic Plus group and not everybody is going to wear these and not everybody needs different colors because you're, the color resonance of the different people... It might be more valuable in Mythic Plus just to have the Whispering Incarnate Icon. You need one for your tank, one for your healer, and one for your DPS, and you get the full benefit of all of them. And in a Mythic Plus group, having the tank and the healer have something that help the DPS as well as help themselves uh, is probably going to be something a lot of people take. I don't know if it'll be the meta, but there's a very strong contender for this to be one of the best options. Now, if you're more raid-focused... There is the Cataclysmic Signet brand. Uh, of the trinkets that you're going to be able to get that do single target damage focus trinkets, this one is going to be a step above the rest. You're realistically going to want a passive trinket like the Essence or the um, Whispering Incarnate Icon, but this thing is going to be insanely good. Uh, just Fury Arms, you're going to do a lot of single target damage with this. So for rating, this thing is also very desirable. But if we're thinking about Mythic Plus, depending on what kind of content you want to do, now we have to consider Firex Tainted Ray Shark. One of the best things about this season is that now, if you just want this item, you can buy it. Like, you, you can, I can have every single item in here. Even if I can't equip them, I can have all the items in here. That means by hitting this all button, 
that means that even t even healers or squishy um, caster DPS that might really want this item can just get it. Uh, so that's actually really, really good. Uh, so we actually have a decent amount of options, mainly because we have options from literally every yes, single raid. We get to pick and choose. As far as damage is concerned, the Voice of the Silent Star might also be one of your third options. Because it just gives you a ton of stats. It even it has a lot of primary stat, but it has no stamina. Because this item has no stamina, uh, it's right now my cloak. This cloak here gives me 2.1k stamina. If I take it off, it did not update my health at all. Why didn't it update my health at all? There we go. So if I put it on, it's about 50k health, right? So you could lose, with this being maximum my level, you could be losing upwards of, I don't know, 70, 80k health uh, by not having your cloak, by not having stamina on your cloak. So that's something to consider. It might be meta for Mythic Plus for damage. It might not be. Uh, this is probably, this item, because it gives you less health, is going to pair quite well with this ring, because this ring obviously gives you a shield to potentially offset that lower health. But... We'll have to oh, really see how the season goes and how it feels and how much damage people are taking because maybe, just maybe in the I season, like having rest. something that takes away like 100k of your health, I don't know if it'll take away that much, but uh, being able to live means you get to do damage. If you can't live a mechanic, it means you're dead. You can't do damage. Right? Until um, next time. But that's just kind of me wanting to yap a little bit about the uh, start of the season. Um... It only just started, like I said, I am grinding out my stuff, uh, but I'm looking forward to all of these items that we can potentially get. And um, one thing I did notice, actually, is all of these are weapons, right? Uh, I All of these are weapons. Um, the I thought we were actually going to be able to buy all the armor pieces, too, but I guess it, only the weapons show up here. Be mine so... If you can, and there's an armor piece you're missing, like one thing I'm going to be doing is when we, as we're clearing vault, uh, I'm going to try and get, where is it? I'm missing the bracers and I'm missing the belt. So one thing I might do, or one thing I'm going to hope to do is try and get these, get these items. I don't really know how I'm going to do this, uh, but I'm going to try and get these uh, so I can finish this transmog. But anyway, 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 anyway. Um, that's just kind of it. Uh, if you want to know what to expect from me, as far as the seasonal content is concerned, uh, I will do my spell reflect guides. Um, I'll actually finish them this time. Last time, I it was so late in the season that I started them that I just ended up not finishing them because other things came out and they were better than what I was already doing. So there's that. Uh, there's just kind of general content. Um, I made a three and a half hour long podcast thing uh, with uh, some other warrior dudes, Zan and Gajil, that I had a lot of fun doing. Um, there, my hope I'm going to be looking around, talking to other people, um, maybe doing some more content like that. I don't know if it's all going to be warrior specific. Uh, maybe I'll reach out, and I'm always interested to hear healers talk about things because I am not a healer man. Uh, so I don't have the same mindset they do. So I was kind of debating on whether or not I could do like a healer one. Because I think that'd be really fun. But otherwise, um, I'll have some content coming up and rolling once I am done with my grind. And things are looking chill for me. I hope the season's going well for you. And I don't want to keep you or myself any longer as it is 5 a.m. and I should be in bed. I hope you have a good night and I will see you when I see you. Peace.